All right, guys. So now we're going to talk about exactly what I'm looking for for this essay, for this process writing. Okay, so I have a few different prompts um, that you can choose from. And then there's a rubric down here in case you're wondering what I'm grading on. Um, if you want to get an A, then you start at the top right here. Okay, so comprehension of text, etc., etc. Your analysis is good and your language uh, the way that you're writing, your grammar, etc., all that is good. Okay, so let's go through the prompts. So the first prompt that I'm looking at is this one that is from the Speech in the Virginia Convention. And all of my periods went through the Speech in the Virginia Convention. Um, so essentially what I'm looking for is for you to look carefully into these three things. Evidence, such as facts or examples, to support your claims. Right. So what you are saying. Uh, so how, I'm sorry. So the, I'm looking at how the author is using evidence. So how do they bring in some facts or some, you know, anything to support what they are saying? Also, reasoning. How do they develop their ideas and then connect their claims to the evidence? OK. And then what kind of stylistic or persuasive elements such as word choice do they use in order to get their ideas across? So I know this sounds like a lot. But evidence, such as facts, if you guys remember, we were talking about logos, right? So anytime that you said that the speech in the Virginia Convention had logos, right, those are facts. So you're going to use those quotes. And if you forgot where we did this, um, my period one and period four, you guys did a project, okay? And then my other period, you guys did an in-depth analysis in your notebooks. So you're just going to go through that, through your projects or your posters or whatever it is, okay? And look for actual quotes that show this, this kind of stuff right here. Um, and then let me go back. For reasoning, okay, how do they provide evidence? How do they connect their facts? to what they are saying, their reasoning. What is the reason behind their facts, okay? If they're trying to say that the king of Britain is being abusive, okay, what are their facts to back that up? And then finally, what kind of style do they use? So going back to our notes, okay, it's these things, the techniques for persuasive speech, repetition, restatement, parallelism, and then rhetorical questions. OK, so like I said, you guys have all these quotes written out and you guys have found them already. You just have to put them in an essay. And then this is what I'm looking for right here. Write an essay in which you explain how Patrick Henry builds an argument to persuade his audience so that colonists fight for independence from Great Britain. In that essay, analyze how he uses one or more of the features up here. OK, so you can just focus on style. You can choose to just focus on ethos, logos, and pathos, or his evidence, or whichever it is that you want, okay? But how does he use that in order to strengthen his logic and to actually be persuasive, okay? So be sure that your analysis focuses on what he is saying and how he is saying it, mostly the how, okay? Notice, I don't want you to explain to me whether you agree or with him or not, but just how does he actually persuade his audience? Okay, um, so the speech in the Virginia Convention can be found in page 99. Um, and then the next thing that you can write on is a Declaration of Independence. And all of my periods, except for period four, so period four, you might not want to do this one, but you guys all went through and you read it. And we went through and we found these things, right? You should have annotations and you should have quotes that are either underlined or highlighted that give you your evidence, your reasoning, and your persuasive elements in your style, okay? So in this, the same way as the first prompt, in this one, you're going to write an essay in, when you exp in which you explain how Thomas Jefferson builds an argument and how he persuades his audience so that colonists could break away from Great Britain, okay? Analyze how Jefferson uses one or more of the features in the directions above to strengthen his logic and to be persuasive. So it's basically the same exact prompt as up here, okay? It's just that now you're doing it for the Declaration of Independence instead of for the speech in the Virginia Convention, okay? And then you can also do it on sinners in the hands of an angry God, okay? And for that one, if you guys remember, you should have done this assignment here, 
Okay, so you have all sorts of stylistic elements such as imagery, anaphora, symbol, illusion, etc. You have all these quotes. Now you just have to put them together and tell me how this makes him persuasive. Okay, how do you think that the symbol of God's hands or the angry pit of fire or whatever, how is that actually persuading his uh, followers, his people in his congregation to actually be good human beings so that they don't end up burning in hell forever okay so as always I have created this document for you guys to write so you're just going to go through you're going to change your name to your actual name right so you're going to delete this and you're going to come up with a title and you're just going to start to write okay so it can be it, you can start it off pretty general so I'm going to choose to start mine off on um, Patrick Henry's uh, speech in the Virginia Convention. So I would say um, in the early stages of the United States, Patrick Henry gave a very important speech in order to convince his followers. Whoops. Oops, followers to break away from Great Britain, okay? And then you can just go into what you're going to talk about. So there are various instances in which he uses repetition and logos to persuade our founding fathers into starting a revolution okay so there I go the things I'm going to talk about are repetition and logos and you can use something very similar as this okay now I don't have time to show you guys but your each each of your paragraphs should be about four to five sentences so make sure you put in a little bit more details right here. You can talk about civil disobedience. You can talk about any of that kind of stuff in your introduction. Um, and then you're going to start talking about it here. So um, Henry, right, Patrick Henry. Henry gave this speech in front of a large audience in a moment where he was trying to convince or persuade people to fight. Okay, so one thing that he did was repeat himself in order to get his point across. So one instance of repetition is, and then I would add my quote. So I don't want to actually put quotes in here because I want, if I put a quote in here, then you can't use it. So I'm just not going to put a quote in here, but I'm just going to say that this is where you would put your quote. Okay. And then you would say, this quote shows that by repeating himself, he is really trying to drive his point across. He says, I don't know, this word, right? And you would tell me what word about, you no, know, five times, which means that it is important. Okay? So you would do that three more times. Okay, so then you would say, Henry also uses logos. Okay, and you would write another paragraph. Your whole thing needs to be five paragraphs long. It needs to have an introduction, a conclusion, and three paragraphs in the middle. And there are no excuses for not even trying to start this. Okay, so please turn in what you have before you leave on Friday, and I'll see you on Monday.